2002 Nissan Frontier with a three point something liter engine, 3.3 I think. This is the one that you guys watched me do the EVAP system leak test on where we had a bad vacuum cut valve bypass valve and it's kind of cool for you guys that watch that video and I'll put a link in this. Um, we actually set another code that wasn't there before by having it unplugged. So electrically, there was nothing wrong with that solenoid when we were testing it until I unplugged it. So that's pretty cool. Um, the one we are addressing now is my low activity, low O2 activity bank one sensor one. In my experience, mo most of the time, probably nine times out of 10, this is just simply a faulty O2. I have seen heater circuit malfunctions cause this. I have seen exhaust leaks in front of the O2 cause this. And then one other time I had one, and I'll put a link in here for this one too, that it was a Hyundai and it actually had the upstream and downstream O2s reversed after somebody put an aftermarket exhaust system in it. So we need to be careful. Uh, generally speaking, when you see this low activity code or slow response code, guys, seriously, you need an O2. But let's take a look at our data and just be sure. While we are waiting here um, for this, you guys probably are noticing, maybe can't see in the shadow, that this is the new Varus Edge that I am that I am playing around with. Let's get a shot of that. Varus Edge, uh, so far, so far so good. I'll let you guys know what I think about it along the way. This is courtesy of Rosedale Technical College. This is not my Varus, this is the schools and they allow me to take it with me and learn how to use it so I can train people better. So uh, at least that's what I tell my boss anyway. He's probably watching this. <laughs> he doesn't care, he knows what I'm doing. Learn the tool, the school purchased it. Gotta give props to the school for letting me use it and uh, actually get more proficient with it and train you guys. But the nice thing about this tool is it, it is wireless. So I am connected to the data link connector through this device. And it, it really gives me a lot more versatility in taking this all over the car and not being tied to the data link connector. So I like that. Uh, we'll see how long the battery life lasts. Uh, in a mobile situation for me, it might be a problem actually that I can't connect to the car because the older Varus if my battery was dead, I would just connect it to the data link connector and I would uh, be able to power it up that way. So not the case here, man. I got to make sure I'm charged up and ready to go on this mobile stuff. Um, anyway, let's configure this data list to look at the O2s. I'm just going to pull up all of my O2 data. Bank two, this is listed weird. Okay, so uh, bank one, sensor one, it's opposite of what is typically there. This is bank two, sensor one. It looks like bank one, sensor two, it's downstream, it's not. Um, but there's your two upstream O2s, and what we can see right away is, I'm just sitting here idling too, how less frequent the signal is on the bank one, sensor one. Um, we should have a lot faster signal. It should look a lot more like bank two. There are specs that we follow one to five hertz, roughly. That's one to five cycles per second we want to see. And we also, sorry, we also want to see a min max voltage of around 0.2 to 0.8 at least. And uh, those numbers look a little weak here too on this bank one. I'm going to hold the RPM up a little bit. These are my downstreams. I don't have those graphed. We're just gonna focus on the upstream. So the way we can verify the heater circuit with this, let, let's say this was a heater circuit malfunction. With my RPM being high, what I'm doing now is I'm using exhaust gas to heat these sensors 
And um, if it was a heater problem on bank one, what we would start to see is this one would come to life more and start looking more like the bank two. You see how fast the signal is. Keep in mind as you're looking at this, guys, that these are frames at the bottom, not time. This is not a scope, this is scan data. So it's, it's voltage to the left over frame, not voltage over time like a scope is. Uh, this is just simply a bad bank one oxygen sensor. There is no reason for me to do any other checks to this. Again, if it was a heater circuit malfunction, holding this RPM right now at 2500 would heat it up and it would start functioning normally. Not the case. I'm not going to do any underhood testing for this. I am going to be a parts changer and tell him to put a bank one sensor one oxygen sensor in this. For you guys that are watching this, you do not need a $10,000 scan tool, which I believe the Varus runs, the Varus Edge. Uh, you do not need a $10,000 tool to do this. Any scan tool that provides graph can do the same thing. I showed you guys, I'll put a link to it, um, a little Bluetooth connected scan tool. You could have done the same thing for this particular test. Of course, I'm gonna use the fancy tools because I have them, but Keep in mind as you guys watch these, it's not necessary in a lot of cases, you can substitute something a little less expensive. Remember, I do this professionally for the do-it-yourselfer. Of course, you're not gonna spend this kind of money on a tool. Okay, so not worried about the heater. Um, there are no exhaust leaks, which is an important piece. I am comfortable just simply telling him to replace this upstream O2. We'll take a look at these downstreams here for a second. Where's my downstreams? It's these guys here. This is bank one sensor two and this is that's not I want to see these become more steady. I don't like how how much these are oscillating is actually suggesting that we have a cat issue. Uh, this is more that we want to see. Look what the computer did here with this bank one sensor. So it's not the cat. It looks like it entered some kind of a open loop fault mode. See if we can make it go out of that. Some mileage on this 117,000. This didn't have cat codes, but I definitely don't like these cats. Not changing our call. We'll select them all. I'm just looking for a loop status here. Oh. I'm looking for like an open loop fault on this. I believe that's what just happened. Let me go to the other data list. That's why that O2 just fixed on us and went lean. Or uh, not lean, uh, lean upstream, rich downstream. Uh, what do we got, what do we got? Yeah, I don't even give me the loop status, it doesn't look like. It might be on here and I'm not seeing it. What are you doing, Paul? Did you figure it out? Yeah, you need an O2 sensor for bank one. Yeah. yeah. I'm bank almost... Bank one, sensor one. Bank one, sensor one, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Bank one, bank one sensor one is that one. Yeah, bank two sensor one is this one. Yeah, look at that, it like totally died on me. Voltage is uh, 0.12 to 0.41. If you guys would see something like this, one of the ways, or one of the problems can be um, wiring when you see this, and it can also be mixture problems. One of the things I like to do is, do rapid snaps of the throttle. We should be able to drive it 
rich and lean. You see up in here, I'm over um, 800 millivolts. That's about 860. And uh, over here, I only hit a half a volt. So again, dead oxygen sensor. That's it, that's all I'm doing with this one, guys. Scan data graph was good enough for me. You guys watched this sensor pretty much just die, is what happened with bank one. Um, is there anything else I can show you? Maybe we may have a different trouble code now. Ah, this low activity code. So no other faults. Okay, the next part of this series, we'll shoot another video on this knock sensor bank one signal high.